Um, I, I really don't think that we have time to go into a, a start to finish powered VSP arrow run for uh, stability and control. Um, know that if you if you want to do you know a powered case, say with actuator discs, you can do PQ and R unsteady analysis and take a look at it. You can set your control surfaces as, as deflected, and then you know go in and, and post process those derivatives and and see what you get. So. Um, you know, we've, we've talked a bit this week about how, you know, VSP Aero is not going to trim the aircraft for you. You kind of have to iterate around on that and, and work on it. There, there's work in progress toward that end, but um, VSP Aero won't do it for you right now. But what it can do is give you, you know, small perturbations. And because it's effectively a linear code, you can extrapolate to some small degree the uh, control surface effectiveness based on small deflections. Um, and those are those are also documented in other uh, workshop presentations too. Um, as far as uh, you know, Rob, you know, we talked about this a little bit. Do you want to mention at all some of your thoughts about trying to use VSP arrow or other methods for transonic? Well, I'll just say that by and large, um, VSP arrow is based on linearized potential theory, and that breaks at transonic. So in, from that standpoint, it's a bad idea, and you should not use VSPRO to do transonic uh, analysis. That said, um, if you're looking at designing an aircraft and you're using some known good supercritical or transonic airfoils, and you're looking to you know design the the lift distribution and get a decent drag polar and and have a good configuration. Um, I'd say that a that an airplane that has a good lift distribution transonically probably also has a good lift distribution at a slightly lower Mach number. And so, what I would encourage you to do is you're you're going to need to be an experienced aerodynamicist for this. I'm not saying this is uh, that this is you know uh, beginner level stuff, but um, you could certainly look at using the the panel code and even the VLM to do things like twist your wing, uh, develop your camber distribution for your supercritical airfoils and work on your plan form design and really design things well at something below that critical Mach number, below where the transonic effects are really gonna dominate. And, um, you know, a, a, an airplane that's well behaved at a slightly lower Mach number will have a better chance of being well behaved as you increase that Mach number. So we won't, we won't capture those higher Mach number effects, and you're going to need something like CART 3D or, or Navia Stokes CFD in order to capture all that. But from a standpoint of lofting the wing and designing the twist and getting the lift distribution right and having a stable airplane and, and really doing your configuration arrow design work, you can probably do that design work at a slightly lower Mach number and uh, get yourself very close um, to, to that ballpark. So, yeah, I'd say... Don't use VSP Aero transonically. All righty. 